Hey there, I'm Mel. Um, so if you've been around this channel for a while, you should know me. Uh, I made a deal with you guys. If you got me to a thousand subscribers before a certain end point, I would do a bonus Q&A on top of my already planned 1000 subscriber video. And you guys did it in less than the time I thought it would take. <laughs> and so here we are. I woke up the next morning and I had a thousand subscribers, which is crazy because that has been a huge goal for me for so long and I'm just so thankful and everything is just so crazy right now because it's just it, it's amazing it's amazing and so as you can tell this is going to be a little unscripted a little rambly I did plan out answers to these questions but I didn't write a script for them like I normally do I just wanted to keep it a little more free form and a little more relaxed that's why my cadence might sound a little different than usual. Um, when I write my scripts, I have planned out in my head already how I'm going to say things. But when I'm off the cuff, it does sound rather different. Um, let's just have some fun. I have collected up the questions here that were put on the community tab post. Um, if you put your question anywhere other than that, I'm sorry, it's not going to be included. Um, it's just because I needed them all to be in one place to keep it organized. Other, I couldn't be hunting down in like three different places. So they're all just, anything that was on that community tab is going to get answered. There weren't terribly many. It's a workable number. So um, let's just start going through them. All right. What are your favorite tropes when it comes to magical girl media? Um, it's funny. I came up with an answer for this the other day and then I just cannot remember it right now. Uh, give me a minute. There's probably going to be a cut in the video in just a second. Oh, I remember. Uh, so one of the things that I really love about magical girl media, um, and I'm not sure if we could specifically call this a trope. I don't know if there is like a trope name for it or anything like that, is the idea that um, strength and badassery and uh, conviction and all that does not have to be separated from femininity. Um, you see a lot in certain subsets of media that in order to be a strong female character, the idea that femininity has to be set aside, girliness has to be set aside, that is seen as childish, naive, not badass. But when it comes to magical girl media, that is embraced because there is often like that transformation into a impractical frilly dress in order to do all this fighting and I love that we are allowed to have that um and it's silly I know um but it is something that is important to me um I was that little girl that I hit a certain age and I was like dresses are dumb I want to hang out with the boys. Girls are boring. All they do is talk. And like years, like at the time, I thought it was so cool. Um, but years later, looking back and reflecting on that, it's like, why did I have to, why did I feel the need to distance myself from my femininity like that? Um, so it's just one of those things that like, I wish I had realized that part of magical girl media when I was little and I think that's what really appeals about it to me so much now and also I've mentioned it before in the videos I love when we are able to as I've always put it smuggle some darkness under the puffy pink petticoats I like when a series can maintain that sort of outwardly friendly cheery aesthetic while also tackling some darker topics and I always think that's fun Heart catch really comes to mind with this. What I like is when you have a very cheery series and it's like, actually, we're going to tackle a really emotional, tough topic now. And it's like, oh, we can do that. <laughs> so that's pretty fun. Ooh, this is a long one. Okay. Um, I have frequently heard some people who say that 3D animation can do everything 2D can do and more. But I think that your Teeny Pink Season 2 video shows a great example where that is not the case. Because Teeny Pink has a less expansive world, less locations, and there are many main characters' family members who never appear because that would require creating entire 3D models for them. But those extra valuable details that do get included in 2D Korean animated shows like Haunted House on Netflix, Link Click to be a Heroine, and Magical Girl shows like Flowering Heart and Rinhani, etc. 
How do you feel about this? Do you agree with me that there is an inherent value to 2D animation because it allows us to be shown these important settings and side character details much easier than 3D? So there is one thing I kind of left out of that point. Character design is something that has to happen even if you do 2D and 3D. It's just the difference between drawing the character and having to make a 3D model for them. And I wish I had put that in there because sometimes a 2D animated show would avoid showing certain things too because they would have to be designed though I, the design process is a lot more for 3D, I would say, because there is that idea that you're going to have to make these things only to be used once. Um, I am a big proponent of 2D animation. I love 2D animation. I wish there was more like theatrical 2D animation happening still. I literally, even if I don't really care about what the movie is about, if it is 2D animated, I will go see it in theaters if I at all possibly can just because I want to support 2D animation, um, which we could talk a whole thing about how 2D animation has fallen out of the theatrical realm, but we're, that's not the topic we're on here. I, I don't think that 2D animation is inherently better for these things. I think that 2D and 3D animation both have their own strengths and weaknesses, um, which leads to them having to focus on different things. 3D animation, it's it's going to have them particle effects <laughs> for sure that sure can be added to 2D animation through 3D processes, but are generally more the staple of 3D animation. I think they both have their own strengths and weaknesses is basically what it is. I think that they are also very different aesthetic wise. The designs of some 3D animated characters it is hard to translate them to duty, which we have seen in even a major corporation such as Disney. When they add 3D princesses to the Disney princess lineup, it sometimes takes a little while for them to figure out how to portray them in 2D to join the lineup alongside all the other 2D animated characters. It took a long time for Merida to look good in those lineups. They've ironed out the process mostly now. Um, but it, it, it's something that just might not translate that well. And likewise, some 2D animated designs don't translate well to 3D. And so it's all about knowing the strengths and weaknesses. And I pointed it out in the teeny ping video just because it was a point where I was seeing a very glaring example of that. A lot of times the series will kind of structure itself in a way to cover for those weaknesses but it, it really depends on what they're working with and how skilled the team is at working with what they have. Um, some people, you just sometimes don't see the weakness until you're in it and you just kind of have to go with it. So I, I don't necessarily think it is a like 2D better than 3D thing. I just think that it is a, in that case in Teeny Ping, it is a point where they failed to work around their limitations and didn't see how that could potentially make things worse. Because I didn't really point it out, but they did introduce a single 3D model in that episode. They introduced the young version of himself that, like I said in the video, Kyle wildly hallucinates. Um, so they introduced one. I think it was just that the limitation was that they could not do more than that uh, in order to actually show us that conflict with his family. And to be fair, in that episode, it also could have been something where they were holding back on that just because Teeny Ping has short episodes. We don't really have the time to actually spend with Kyle's family. So it was kind of two issues intersecting in tandem in the Teeny Ping episode in order to cause this problem. Three questions and one comment. Let's go. Will you make a video of you drawing Teeny Pings as humans? No, I am not an art channel. I am not an artist. I do dabble in doing art things sometimes, but I am not skilled in it. So I'm just not suited to make that sort of content. I'm also not trying to focus more on Teeny Pink than I have to. I will probably make a video on season three when it completes. Not necessarily immediately, but you know, I will probably eventually make a video on season three. But I am not promising anything uh, for Teeny Ping beyond just what I have done so far, which are the seasonal retrospectives. How do you feel about Dada Ping, Gogo -Go Ping, and Cha Cha Ping in a love triangle? I don't know. 
this is clearly some teeny ping fan discourse that I don't understand. I don't think about the three of them much because I didn't really care for them as characters. I don't think they had rich enough inner lives as portrayed in the series in order to even have that kind of a thing. Um, I personally find Dada Ping really annoying. <laughs> so um, I, I, I don't think about them in a love triangle because I, I don't think about Teeny Ping all that much and I don't care enough to get into shipping discourse about Teeny Ping. Have you heard of Tenkai Nights? No. Simple, simple as that. Haven't heard of it. What show is your favorite to watch on your free time? Oh, there are so many. Uh, in terms of anime, I don't cross promote it all that much. But if you go over to my TikTok, which is same name is here, basically what you'll find is I make short videos talking about every anime that I finish or drop. And in that you can find all the uh, currently airing or like I picked this up to watch it because it was already complete anime that I've been watching. Um, of those, some of the best ones to come out recently, I absolutely loved Apothecary Diaries. It's fantastic. You should definitely watch it if you are above a certain age. If there is somehow a 12-year-old watching this video, please do not go watch Apothecary Diaries yet. Wait until you're like 14 or 15. Um, I watch Apothecary Diaries. Um, my roommate and I, if we need a show to throw on in the background, we will just put on Bluey. Bluey is fantastic and it is an excellent background noise show where I can occasionally look up and be lightly amused. And, but I, every time a new episode comes out, I watch it intently. Bluey is an excellent show. <laughs> My roommate sucked me into the Grey's Anatomy hole. <laughs> um, so I have seen all of Grey's Anatomy twice now because sometimes we also use that for a background show and I do watch every episode as it comes out every week it is not a good show do not watch it um well I take that back the first few seasons are okay um but it, it is one of those shows that I am still watching it because of I have Stockholm Syndrome it is I'm not watching it because it's good we spend half the time we're watching it complaining about the plot lines and making fun of it so there's that I watch Dancing with the Stars I enjoy Dancing with the Stars um uh, for a lot of my free time viewing, I do watch a lot of YouTube. I like a good video essay, but also like I watch a few gaming channels and things like that here and there. Um, God, I'm just going down the list of like things I have watched recently at this point. Um, I watch football. Go Packers. <laughs> I am currently working my way through The Boys. Uh, also another thing that the No No Children do not watch. Um, I am through season two. I'm starting into season three. I haven't made it that far, but I'm watching that. I'm trying to watch the Vox Machina series because um, I was never really into Critical Role, but I do play D&D and the series scratches an itch for me that I enjoy. Um, Oh, another specific anime recommendation that goes kind of hand in hand with that. Dungeon Meshi is fantastic. Um, or Delicious in Dungeon. Good shows. So, um, yeah, I, I lately I've been watching a lot of animated stuff, but I, I do watch on animated stuff. I swear it's just not coming to me off the top of my head. I really should have made a list for this question, but I forgot to. Will you do reviews outside magical girl anime like romance or action? Um, so... Maybe, maybe not. Uh, r Magical Girl stuff is going to kind of be my bread and butter for a while still, uh, just because I am working my way through all that Precure stuff. Um, but after that, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> God, that's so noncommittal. Basically, I have some projects that are not Magical Girl anime I have that I'm working on. I have some projects that are not anime at all that I'm working on but it is just a matter of like when those get done and when I can work on them between other projects um I have one project that I call my um that I call my not for the channel project but it would definitely go up on the channel it is a project looking at a series that is basically the direct opposite of a magical girl anime in some regards not so much in others but it, it is definitely not magical girl related but it is a project that is very near and dear to my heart. So I'm working on it very slowly um, and working my th way through the series because it's one of those ones where I'm not just going to look at the show and talk about it. I am also 
reading the novels, reading the side stories, uh, because there's parts of the novels that the anime didn't get to, and I want to talk about those. And it, it's a project that's very near and dear to my heart. However, it is 100% my super back burner project. It is going to be, at this point, years <laughs> before I completed it. Um, it yeah, it's, it's a big project. It would probably be longer than my Otona Precure video, which if you've seen the length on that, wow. Um, so that, that is one project that is definitely um, on the table that I would like to get to at some point, but it is a not right now kind of thing. Um, I might talk about other anime. I think maybe after the second season of Apothecary Diaries comes out, I might talk about that because I really, really do love the Apothecary Diaries and I, I've been reading the novels. So that should tell you that I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> I'm deep in. And I know that the stuff coming up next season is going to be fantastic. But um, I also have a few things that I'm working on that are non-anime. I don't want to give away what they are um, and get everyone's hopes up because these are also long-term projects that are going to be a little while. Um, but I have a project where I'm looking at something American animated, like a, another sort of meta franchise let pre is, but it's not quite as lengthy, so I would fit it all into one video. Um, basically looking at, it's, it's a multimedia franchise, but I would look specifically at all the animation that came with it. There is a project that I'm working on that is to do with video games. That one is also going to be a long, long burn. It is a lengthy game series, and I've only played two of them for the sake of review and coverage, and I haven't even written anything other than an intro for that. And then also there is a movie series that I would like to cover, but that one is also very lengthy and would take me a while to get through all of them. So it's just a matter of when I find time to work on these things and write about them, basically, especially because I like to take notes. Um, there are some things where I could, I could literally watch a movie and then write about it immediately, but because of how and when I'm able to watch things, I like to take notes, um, especially because I give my notes away as a Patreon thing. So I feel like I should take notes. Um, so it's just a matter of when I can find time to do these things. And so, so the answer is yes, I will cover things outside of magical girl anime. I just don't think it's going to be for a little while. Cause I'm currently working on at least two magical girl related projects beyond Precure. So, um, that's going to be what I'm going with for now, but yeah, we'll definitely expand and look at other things too. Which are your favorite Precure fairies? Uh, Tart. Tart's my favorite. I love him. He's delightful. And I, it is because he is not a little annoying catchphrase generator thing. I, I Look, I understand why they do it, but I do not like the little, like, saying something at the end of my sentence to indicate that I'm magical. Uh, I'm not here for that. So uh, Tart is definitely my favorite. He breaks from the convention of Precure fairies, though, which is like pretty obvious that would make him my favorite um other than that Coco and nuts i like too but i i like them in their human form i don't really care for them as fairies <laughs> so maybe that doesn't count and um i am i am currently watching smile and i am finding myself kind of liking candy but she's not my favorite uh it for me she feels like if the first season fairies were just done better <laughs> because she is chaotic and a problem, but she's also pulling it off a little bit better. Oh, and I love Hummy. Like I said in my sweet video, she has no thoughts behind those eyes, and I love that about her. What is your favorite Magical Girl series you've reviewed? If we're talking just things I've reviewed, Heart Catch 100%. Heart, I have mostly talked about um, Precure, obviously. I've, I've basically just talked about Precure and Teeny Pink. God, we really do need to branch out on this channel. Um, but it, it would 100% be Heart Catch because I like Precure better than I like Teeny Ping and Heart Catch so far for me has been the best Precure season. Do I like light novels? Yes, I actually am. So I, I don't talk about it here much, uh, but I have this rule for myself that I'm allowed to buy one book a week. I do not stick to it often. There are weeks that I skip and weeks that I buy 12 books. However, <laughs> um, I am building up a manga and light novel collection just because I'm a manga girly. And so I 
uh, pick up light novels here and there. Uh, for the light novel series that I am currently collecting, um, I have the one that I talked about having not being a magical girl thing at all, that video. I have the entire light novel series for that, uh, but I'm not going to say what it is because no spoilers. I am collecting the Apothecary Diaries as they come out physically because, like I said, love that series. I am collecting Raven of the Inner Palace. Um, I've only picked up the first one of that so far, and I haven't even gotten around to reading it yet. But I did love the anime so much that I want to get into the novels, and it's just a matter of finding the time. I am I have the first two sagas of Ascendance of a Bookworm, um, but I do like light novels. They're very good for um, my current lifestyle. I need shorter books just because I'm on a time crunch a lot of the time. Uh, I don't have, I used to read a lot when I was in elementary and middle school and high school. Uh, but as I've gotten into adulthood, it's been harder to find the time. And light novels are nice because they're quick and easy and breezy. And oh, oh one I forgot that I'm also working on getting my hands on is Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Those are really good too. Since you said you enjoyed writing, do you read as well? Favorite books slash authors? Uh, like I said <laughs> just a minute ago, I haven't had as much time to read since I got into college. So um, you could say that my reading habits are in a little bit of arrested development because I haven't read much beyond that point. I haven't read a whole lot of adult novels, as you could put it, um, besides those that I read for college, <laughs> obviously. Um, and some of those were not good. I didn't care for them, but, you know, you do what the professor says. Um, so I, I do love the Percy Jackson series. The Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan has always been great. Um, like I mentioned with the light novels, I love Apothecary Diaries and I love Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Those are the two that I would quickly and readily recommend for anyone who shares similar tastes to me. Um, Apothecary Diaries specifically, the, the flavor and the text is so good. I just love it. Um, let's see, what else? And, and, there, and there are other things. I'm, I'm just kind of drawing a blank on exactly what to add to the list right now. Um, oh, I guess I should mention, I do love him. Uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I have read every Sherlock Holmes short story and novel because that's what I did my thesis on in college. So obviously I have a huge soft spot for him as well. How and when did you get into Magical Girls? Same as most people in my age demographic, I saw Sailor Moon. <laughs> it's it's really as simple as that. I saw um I saw and experienced Sailor Moon at a young age and it altered my brain chemistry. Um one thing specifically that I could say is I so I'm lucky enough that while I don't live in a major major city, I live in definitely a big city or on the suburbs of it, let's be clear. And so I had access to a really good library system that had a lot of variety and ha was willing to get things like computer games. And I, I could literally go to the library right now and rent a sewing machine if I was so desired. So my, my library system is really fantastic. And part of that is that they did get a lot of manga and they did get a decent amount of anime. I wouldn't say a lot, um, especially because back in the day, anime was quite expensive to get. But they had a decent amount, and one thing they did definitely have was they had Sailor Moon. And so I actually just got the Sailor Moon R movie and watched that multiple times. <laughs> really loved that. So those were definitely an early starting point. And what happened was I read the Sailor Moon manga, and I read the Tokyo Mew Mew manga. I, I never actually watched the Tokyo Mew Mew anime done by four kids. I only read the manga, so that was my experience. I saw the anime I, I saw like a little bit of the anime and saw how they altered things and I went no I don't like that <laughs> and that was my first indication that four kids sucked um so yeah th those were really the starting point um but yeah like most people I started with Sailor Moon I do really love and have a soft spot for Sailor Moon um but I don't think I will ever do a video on it um and that's just because Sailor Moon has been talked over so much. I don't really feel like I have anything to add to the conversation that wouldn't be basically repeating other people without specifically repeating them. I think most of what is to be said about it has been said. So, 
Okay, and the last one. Will you do a review of Madoka Magica or please do Yuki Yuna? So this is something I get asked a lot. I get asked a lot, will you do this thing? And the answer is maybe to probably not. I have a lot of things that I'm currently working on and specific plans that I have laid out. And so anything added to that would have to, you know, slot in between on there. Um, specifically on these, Yuki Yuna is a probable no. That's one of those series that like, I don't know that much about it, but it's probably one that I just kind of want to watch in my own time. And I am definitely never going to talk about Monica or probably not. Maybe I'll do something when Walpurgis Knocked Rising comes out, but I don't hold me to that. Monica is another one of those shows that I feel like it has been talked to death like crazy. Everyone's put out their Madoka take. We are so far removed from the initial release of Madoka that, like with Sailor Moon, I don't feel like there's anything new I could say to add to the conversation. Um, I do like Madoka. Madoka is a very good series. I will direct you if you're searching for Madoka content to this video that's all about uh, looking into the character of Sayaka Miki, which is really, really beautiful and fascinating, and I definitely recommend giving it a watch, even though it's quite long. But if you want my my Madoka hot takes, I can give you them. My first one is that I don't think that the darkness that happens in Madoka Episode 3 is entirely surprising. I don't think that it is a massive tonal shift or anything like that. Um, while I didn't necessarily go into the series expecting a character to die, that dark thematic stuff was already there from the beginning. The very first shots of the show are already pretty tonally dark, and then the entire way that the witch layers are constructed visually, it, that show was not pretending that much. The only thing that really pretends is like the opening theme and some of the marketing. But Madoka was not trying to be hide its darkness, and I don't understand why people were so completely shocked that, ooh, darkness can be in a magical girl show. Like, yeah, it's it's in regular magical girl stuff. If you want, if you look at Sailor Moon, everyone dies at the end of the first arc. And yeah, they get reborn, they got better, but like, there is dark shit in magical girls that I think people who aren't familiar with the genre just don't realize are, it's kind of a staple of the genre in some places. Not everyone not not every magical girl series, but many have darker elements. So Monica was not being subtle. And my second hot take about Monica is that I don't think it's incredibly subversive. There are some elements that I find subversive about Monica, don't get me wrong. But I think ultimately the themes of hope, faith, uh, friendship, that's all standard magical girl stuff like Madoka's goodness faith in others and love saves the day that is not that far off base <laughs> of most other magical girl stuff and I think um that anyone who thinks it's a deconstruction is just no Madoka is a magical girl series. It is a dark example of a magical girl series, but it, it, at the end of the day, it's a magical girl series. I don't think it is this genre flipping thing that so many people make it out to be. Do I think that there are elements about Madoka that make it truly special as a series? Yes, absolutely. But I think a lot of the takes that you see from people who are like, Monica ripped apart the magical girl genre and reconstructed it, blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> I, I I think that some of that is coming from people who don't necessarily have a full understanding of the capabilities of the magical girl genre. So um, that's my hot takes about Madoka. Please understand that those are very off the cuff and those are not structured arguments. And that's it. Those are all the ones that were on my community post. So... Like I said before, thank you so much for being subscribed. It means the world to me. Let's keep going at this. And I can finally make money off of YouTube. Yay. <laughs> it's not the only reason I'm doing it. I promise. I promise. But that is very exciting. And it gives me a legitimacy in the eyes of my family, which really does matter. 